the mic, I can talk. I don't know whether I can talk out of the mic, but I suppose if I move my head all the way over here, it is out of the mic, and then this is in the mic. Yeah, so yeah, it's so. a good way to describe. It. <laughs> Glad we got that clarified. <laughs> Just in case, no pun intended. Because uh, my name is Justin. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You're feeling a little stiff this morning. I am. Yeah. Yeah. You got. I got a slip in the. You got a C9 shul- disc. Or oh something. yeah. No. Looks like you're doing a shoulder twerk over there or something. <laughs> you know, you're trying to work it out. I was like, <laughs> how do you, how do you stretch that one? You need vertebrae. The, you, you need know? those cross over the arms and pick yourself up by your elbows. Yeah, there you move. go. That would. Uh, That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Stop making me think about it. <laughs> uh, how are you, Mark? I am well. No uh, vertebrates bothering you this nah, morning? Nah. That's good. I, I didn't get my stretching out the, done this morning, but typically I get my stretches. You didn't? I did not. Oh, yeah. That's because I gave prepping. you homework. Yeah, you gave me homework and I was prepping. <laughs> I didn't get my stretches in this morning. My bad. That's okay. I am good. Did you have your quiet time kombucha? I did. I did. I had my good. quiet time, good. like I say. That was that was three thirty, so I just, <laughs> had to make time for the other the the prep. So you know, but I was I was up, I was ready to go. So yeah, a little quiet time, kabucha. The dogs yeah. just kind of laid at my feet and said, "Hey, this is a little early. We're yeah. uh, we're glad to eat, but now we're just gonna lay down and finish the rest of our sleeping." So wow. yeah, that's, yeah, that's nuts. But it's good. <laughs> it's good. Uh, I, I, if I would have done it at nine thirty last night when I received the text, right. it wouldn't have been any. Right. Yeah, it would have been yeah, non beneficial. Yeah, I yeah. hear that. Welcome to How I See It with me, Mark Pratt, and Justin Sternberg. This is a podcast that works to counter cultural polarization through thoughtful conversations. So yeah, but it's good. It's good to see you. Speaking of quiet time, kombucha, you got yeah. me on, on it. Yeah, how's that going? That. Well, I think it's going all right. Yeah? <laughs> you got a kombucha, you got, got a scoby co- growing? Yeah. Okay, Yeah. then you're yeah, good. It's, it's it's doing its thing. Um, it's a little bit hard to keep it at the temperature. They're saying, you know, 74 okay. to 80 or whatever. Yeah. It's like, well, it just got cool out, so. Yeah. No, yeah. I hear you. I you understand. this little heater mat that I, it's like a foot heater basically matt so i got it on that and is that working it's working good it's it kicks off on its own okay so So it can regulate it at a temperature yeah well no it doesn't ever come back on oh it doesn't like cycle on and off okay yeah Yeah. so it's kind of one of those anyway yeah it's it's a new learning thing trying to figure it out but it's good Well, good for you i'm looking forward to the reward it's what uh we desire to offer is new learning that's right oh and speaking of new learning i made a mistake the other day other Mm. the the other well probably more than one (laughs) but in the podcast i was uh chris brought to my attention i was using the term whole milk in place of raw milk Oh, so for anybody, you know, that was confused by that, I would, yeah. basically whole milk just means all of the fat is in it. It's right. typically 4%, but raw milk is non-pasteurized. Right. So all of the bacteria and the enzymes that I believe are designed in it yeah. are available to our digestive system. And when we pasteurize it, we take out some of the good bugs yeah. with the... With the what is not good, yeah. you know, term not good bugs, you know, yeah. it's like the balance is gone at that yeah. point. So like say, I, I, that was my bad because I was using whole milk in place of raw milk in the podcast. And, yeah. And there was some, what we were talking about, you were saying that raw, you were saying whole milk, but raw milk has a certain benefit or oh yeah raw milk has the actually the because we're talking about uh, so much lactose intolerance Uh, you know today in our in our food chain and that kind of thing and what happens is many of the enzymes that are in raw milk are killed 
in the pasteurization yeah. process. So many people who would consider themselves lactose intolerant can actually drink raw milk without That's the right. side effects. That's right. Yep, of of that. of milk and that kind of because the the digestion of the fat particles and so forth. So, yeah, that was a bad move on my part. But like I say, <laughs> that's all right. Should we talk about pasteurization? <laughs> not this morning, it's but not, yeah, I don't. It's, I guess apparently that can be a polarizing topic. Just yeah, to, we're gonna find out. <laughs> that's my whole goal is to find that's out. That's right. That's right. Yeah, um, but that's actually not what we're gonna talk about this morning, right? No, it's yeah. not. That's not what you got up to do your homework for. That's not. That's not. <laughs> but I did appreciate the opportunity to do the homework. It was fun. Yeah. It was yeah. fun. It's an interesting topic. So yeah. it's about hypnotism. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. And uh, depending on who you are, what you've heard about it or whatever, it might be a very, you might be on a polar side of whether mm. you think it's voodoo and evil or yeah. you think it's a viable thing or, or whatever, you know, so yep. we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um I first um, heard a podcast on Huberman Labs, which I really yeah. like that podcast. He, he talks a lot a lot about kind of some cutting edge science and stuff like that. Um, and I think we referenced him before. I think more sure. like when we talk about neural Neuro, pathways. Neuroplasticity and neural pathways, yeah. yep. Yeah, that, yep. Um, and so this is, you know, kind of falls in a similar groove in terms of sure. changing your brain. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, 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 he yeah, it's a, it's a good podcast um generally um i feel like it's a it's a solid one yeah um, but yeah I, I listened to one where he talked about hypnotism with a, a doctor who that's been his focus his whole life and in fact his father was also that was his primary mm -hmm. focus it was kind of cool dr Spie Psych spiegel psychoanalysts basically yeah. with the combination of hypnotism in that process so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Thank even you. even that uh, psychoanalyst can have kind of its own connotation. You kind of can go to the Freudian side of things, you know, and you think from a you know a therapy standpoint, mm -hmm. you know. So it's just it's just interesting to think about, you know, as 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 the two come together. For me personally, is because I think you know we can have all of our our different views, and I think that's a that's a good part of the hypnotism is basically you know we tend to look at things on a on a continuum. And one side might be, one might, we, you know, somebody that looks at, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy or something, you know, CBT versus, you know, psychoanalysis type stuff, you know, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna have a differing viewpoint yeah. to certain people based on that aspect of vulnerability and control right. and those kind of things that tend to create polarizing topics. So you're... I mean, I think you're speaking from like a, we're all in on this and understand I what apologize. you're saying. So I'll just, I'm going to tease it out a little bit, yeah, but that's explain fine. to me, because it sounds like you're saying uh, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy mm -hmm. is one end of p potentially some sort of continuum where psychoanalysis maybe, is that what you're saying? Yeah. It might be yeah. another. In Can other words... In other words, when we think of psychoanalysis, we tend to think of Freudian and all of his, and you know, his, if you will, his flawed research based yeah. on, you know, over focusing on sexualization, you know, that kind of thing, you know, that I, I believe there, what he found, you know, in many cases, you know, these complexes, if you will, I think some of that is real in our, in our human experience but the foundation that it's all yeah. about being a sexual being mm -hmm. isn't necessarily you know yeah original and and that's not and that, that's that's not to give psychoanalysis a bad rap in that process it's just that individual and it's also probably correct me if i'm wrong fair to say that that's just one yes one focus of yes. psychoanalysis yes that exactly okay yeah what and, are some other and like when focuses? You, well, when you think of like CBT, cognitive behavioral okay. therapy, you know, we're basically, you know, focusing on how I think, you know, in that process mm -hmm. of being able to recognize, well, quite often, like you and I will talk about the always and the nevers. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. that process of the, the flexibility of my thinking tends to 
help me recognize whether whether I have the ability to be fluid in a changing environment or whether I'm going to maintain a you're what, tied to your script. Yeah, a, an unhealthy rigidity, if you will. I think you know rigidity can be mislabeled as well. I think you know there's something to be said for you know. I think we need to have some flexibility in life. Not yeah. that, not, and you know, we've talked about that with open mindedness, yeah. you know, and, and hypnosis for me is, is a, is a similar dynamic. Um, granted, I, for me personally, it's, I see it as another, another gateway, um, if you will, to, you know, the mind. And I, and I, for me, I, I do see it as very similar. I have, you know, clients who have, uh, experienced ketamine, you know, ketamine therapy, um, uh, hyperbaric chambers, you know, where you're, where you're floating in yeah. salt water, you know, and you're yeah. kind of given this weightlessness and, you know, and even some, and, you know, and much of these processes. And that's like a, a sensory deprivation type yeah, process. Yeah, it's. To- yeah. Right. It, it's creating what we, what I would call a mindfulness. Not so much. Even the ketamine experience um, goes through a mindfulness process. You know where you, you know, you're yeah. listening to certain songs. You know, you're focusing on things. You know, and I think that's so much of what for me, hypnosis can be is this ability to shift, uh, states of mind or, you know, and it, and it's a guided focused process. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying that that can't have adverse, you know, dynamics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that being said, I really like the way they developed, you know, clinical, you know, hypnosis apart from stage hypnosis. Yeah. So I was going to bring, yeah, mention that in the podcast episode. They kind of deline- delineated between those two, right? Sure. And this idea that stage ho- hypnosis is kind of the the version of, you know, hypnosis that we all think of or, you yeah. know, is kind Where of, somebody's clucking like a chicken and going across yeah. the stage, kind of embarrassing yeah, themselves. Dangling the watch. and Yeah. And then you see the little... Uh, <laughs> the circle thing it's yeah yeah and it, and it, and for me and and here again i i appreciate i think this is kind of where i'm where i come from i appreciate solid research yeah because i don't think we have anything to be scared of yeah when when we have solid research the research that frustrates me you know is when we're basically doing research but we're just ignoring all these other things to kind of promote the idea you know um i would say even the uh, vaccines you know were a part of that we need to have this out we need to create this safety you know so we're going to push this stuff through and we're not we weren't necessarily given credibility to some of these alternative issues that might be i'm not saying they are but you know we we can see there's some correlation yeah. between this so like you say that's i'm all in favor of solid research yeah. and, and like you say uberman labs i seem to you know i i appreciate what he's able to share in the context of the questions and mm-hmm. that kind of thing i think you know yeah it's it's solid stuff from my perspective yeah I mean, from the yeah, the two or whatever. Yeah, who yeah. I, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like I'm I'm certainly not going to yeah. argue with what those guys are saying. You know, <laughs> yeah. they they you know they use more uh, what are those you know, like uh, labels like yeah the buzzwords C- CNPR Charging. JPD yeah. you know and it's like and they know what all that yeah. stands for and yeah. it's like if they say it out it's like okay I might know one part of that right. you know and that <laughs> that sounds like you know yeah. singlet and all that stuff you know. Yeah. Yeah. And Andrew Huberman is a professor at NYU or, or something. I don't remember. Uh, Stanford, isn't he? Sir Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, the point is he's, he's a smart guy. Yeah. Um, and then he has on these, you know, pr- world renowned scientists to talk about stuff. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, but anyway, uh, the re- one of the reasons I 
wanted to chat about it here is yeah. just because of the maybe more of the theological side of it. And mm. um, in fact, um, there was a message uh, at our church maybe mm. six months ago or something. And <laughs> our pastor was just making the point about do whatever you need to do to get you know, healthy hmm. from certain addictions. He said, if you, you know, I, I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was something about um, do anything, do counseling or hypnoti- hypnotizing hmm. or whatever you need to do. Hmm. And I think maybe it was a little tongue in cheek. I don't really know, but um, um, someone asked me about that. Like, what do you oh, think really? about that? Yeah. Like, what is that? That doesn't seem right. Why, you know, why hmm. would that be said from, you know, the pulpit kind of thing? And I was what like, do you, what do you do in circumstances like that? Who, which, what, when, which when people are asking you, because I think uh, I run into that myself. Yeah, you know, and I and I I'm gotcha. I'm all I'm I'm kind of it's like at what point you're able to express. I'm not trying to shift the subject, but no, it, you know, because I think in our day and age, in our you know, it's like people can't necessarily approach the pastor every time in every circumstance yeah. with you know. 1300 people in attendance, you know? Yeah. And so other people, I find myself in that situation where it's yeah. like, what do you think about that? Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's an honest question. Yeah. And it's interesting. Cause like you say, I might not always find myself in agreement, but yeah. Well, I mean, I think about it like what you just shared about the milk, right? Okay. Like out of all the podcast episodes, uh, 85 to be exact have been released. <laughs> like there's, there's a good chance there's a lot of stuff in there that isn't quite accurate. Right. Like, okay. But, but, but our goal isn't necessarily to be a hundred percent accurate. In fact, we called it how I see it so that we don't have to be accurate. <laughs> That's our disclaimer. <laughs> our right? title is our disclaimer. That's right. Exactly. It's right in there. Um, uh, joking aside, like, you know, we do our best, but you know, make yeah, yeah. mistakes, word slips, whatever you want yep. to say, you know, and yep. I, remember, I remember the one that I keep bringing up about talking about homeschoolers and yeah. whatever that emotional, what was it? Intelligence. Uh, intelligence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like how I, I've been, you know, uh, eating those words ever since and that kind of thing. But that's like a perfect example of something that, you know, came out one way and didn't necessarily mean. And um, so, I, you know, that's, that's one perspective yeah. often Grant is like, well, I mean, we can't expect our pastor to be batting a thousand, you know, like yeah. he's not going to never say something wrong or slip or whatever. Sure. And so that's kind of number one, right? Exactly. Like, and then beyond that, it's about the specific thing. So in this case, I, I was like, well, I totally get his point And I agree mm. with this point, which is like, do what you have to do. Like think like that, like for me mm-hmm. being involved in CR for a long time, it's not until someone says, I'll do whatever it takes, that they're willing to do whatever it takes. You I know got what you. I mean? And, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that was kind of his point, is about being willing sure. to do whatever it takes. As to that exact thing about hypnotism, I mean, I think that's a very interesting and interesting mm-hmm. question. And I had ac- uh, actually just listened to this episode. Honey. You know, not, not too much long before that. I heard the same message. I didn't remember hearing that point. So to me, it didn't oh, okay. stand out as like... Yeah, yeah you know, mind blowing or whatever. But I, I, I imagine for someone who has, you know, maybe heard about or read about, or, you know, has a particular bent theologically that it's wrong for many, you know, for sure. whatever reason that would be like, Doing! you know, it'd stand right out in the message. Uh, yeah. So I, I understand that. Um, and this person sent me a link to a got questions dot org, which generally I, I really respect that website. It's, it's yeah. really cool about tackling. I mean, it's kind of like, Kind of like what we try and do, tackling hard questions, polarizing sure. questions from a biblical perspective. Um, and so they're, you know, asking about hypnosis and they have their answer and it's very much hypnosis is wrong for, you know, one, two, three, four, five reasons. Yep. Um, all of which are good reasons, you know, I think, sure. I think it's a solid argument. Um, I came away from, re- from reading it. I mean, you, you briefly mentioned something about um, opening our mind to influence, right? Sure. Gateways. Yes. Gate, gateways. Yeah, sure. it's good. And I, and I was thinking about some of those points sound exactly, if you didn't know they were talking about hypnotism, you you could think about them talking about um, like catfishing, you know, catfishing, mm-hmm. right? Or mm-hmm. um, someone who's in the 
influence of somebody they shouldn't be Mm -hmm. and how, you know, influential that can be and how they can basically change their brain to say, Mm -hmm. you know, weird, creepy people like us are trustworthy and everyone else is not, you know, and kind of some of that stuff that can happen. Right. And it made me think about how, and and, and of course that author of that article wouldn't argue that those are good situations either. I guess I was just saying like the way they described it didn't sound that different from other ways to be influenced that if you are not entering it with a wise mind and and the desire, you know, yeah, in healthy desires, it can be really problematic. Sure. And I think even, even as I, you know, uh, it's funny because you bring that up. It's like even as I was talking about research and you know and and smart people, you know, the whole uh, and it's definitely the beginning of Romans. Maybe it's not Romans one, but you know where it talks about you know they they gave themselves over basically to intelligence. You know these mm-hmm. knowledgeable people, and they still did. You know they to a a depraved mind, if you yes. will. You follow me? Yeah. And I, I'm I'm not. Yeah, I'm not at that point where I'm saying, you know, all all science is is all good. All research is all good. But I think we do have to be mindful or be aware um, that there are many things about I think there are many things about our body, about our mind body connection that we are really unaware of or have been unaware of. And so much, you know, research is being done in such a way that there is a greater awareness. And, and I'd still say some of these things, you know, like mindfulness, if you want to take it, you know, from a um, Eastern mysticism yeah. type perspective, yeah. you know, where, you know, I am emptying myself, right. you know, and, the you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm not I'm not for that. But mm-hmm. I, the, the process of mindfulness in being focused and even I would even dare say, you know, um, some of what I do in a devotional you know, Christ centered devotion is part of mindfulness. Yes. My ability to yeah. get up at a certain time and have certain routines and certain structures. I believe that's mindfulness for me. You, uh, yeah, I feel like that's a good parallel, right? This idea. So meditation, right? It sure. Can, it can go two directions. It can go to that Eastern meditation yep. and empty your brain, that kind of thing. And it can go, you know, well, that's the term we often use in, in Christian circles to talk about, you know, quiet time or whatever. It's a kind of meditation or whatever. Sure. And the difference being, you know, trying to empty your brain versus trying to focus your brain. Yes. And I feel like that is a good correlation to this concept of hypnosis where, um, you know, kind of the stage of hypnosis is trying to reset your brain state so that I can get you to do something I want you to do. Yep. Where clinical hypnosis is this idea to... Uh, first you start with focus, right? And it's kind of similar to what you were saying about the ketamine therapy where they kind of set up, right? Well, in ketamine therapy, you're actually given the the drug, which which creates a a gateway, yeah, that kind of thing. But yes. Yeah, and this is essentially that, but without the drug, right? Exactly. Basically, you're trying, but but you were describing a setting up of an environment Yep. To, to initiate a certain specific change. It's therapy. It's a, right. this attempt to reframe your thinking about a particular thing. Usually it's trauma, right? Like, sure. Or maybe phobias. a strong addiction or phobias. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, and and this is very much in that vein, you know, according to what my understanding from this. No, no. Um, where there's this setup, there's this focusing yep. of your efforts towards this one thing. Yes. And then that brain state, you know, you you get into the state where you're able to rethink things. And I thought that was pretty cool. But again, yeah, that correlation seemed to tie pretty well together. This idea of meditating for the sake of emptying your brain or meditating for the sake of focusing it. Yes. Similar, I think in the hypnosis thing, like if you're, if your attempt is just to empty your brain or, you know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it's and, like, it, and I'll be honest in the got questions perspective. It's not that I disagreed with anything of that, but it definitely, and I'm, and I think it brings up, um, that, that context of hypnosable versus non hypnosable, yeah. you know, hypnosable yeah. people will be able to have this connection of, if I, if I may say so without using the brain parts, you know, that there isn't this conflict 
this inner brain conflict, you know, and that allows them to be hypnosed. Yeah. You know, to the to the point of being, you know, brought into this state where I'm open to this Mm -hmm. gateway and then there's an influence that's Mm -hmm. provided there. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, it's cool. Yeah, that's he. He talked pretty much at length about hypnotizability, which is sure. yeah, which you're talking about, and this idea that you know, some there's uh, a wide swath of yep. you know people and how hypnotizable they are, and yep. some are some are very you know uh, uh, in, hypnotizable, and some are not. And sure, he said that just has a lot to do with kind of your brain makeup and how you think about the kind of what you're saying, the whether, conflict. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, the conflict. Whether you can disassociate you know, competing idea, you know, or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I, I, that, I think that's pretty interesting. I think, uh, I'd be, I'd be curious to know, essentially, I feel like a lot of times trauma can reframe our brain to think a certain way, right? Like it's kind of, of a forcing of neural pathways to yep. be inserted into our brain. That's an, an unhealthy pattern, but it's, it's due to this kind of, sheer force of the brain through sure. trauma right like, experience yeah i like to think of it and this is how i think of it i tend to think of you know our brain we have these neural pathways okay and they're very similar to what i what i used to call a crick but yeah. it's actually a creek <laughs> you know these these smaller pathways okay well when when we experience trauma okay it's like a huge flood comes through mm. and now all those little individual creeks tributaries are in tributaries that, you mm. know, just kind of meandered. Now there's this, this cutting force that has gone through and in many cases rewired those neural pathways. Yeah. So instead of having these individual, you know, tributaries that can kind of filter, you yeah. know, certain things out, you know, now we have this big river yeah. that's gone through and now it, it makes it seem as if everything is connected to yeah. that one thing. Yeah. Because we don't have these little parts that can kind of filter out where well, we went this way. We used to go this way, then that way. You know, now it's all one pathway. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. That's, that's the analogy good... that I would typically use. I like that analogy a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. And the goal of a lot of therapy is to to add nuance back in so that correct. you can and that's you know cognitive behavioral therapy is about like let's think through this thing and think about right uh, yeah 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 uh, let's let's process this river and sure. start to tease out these tributaries a little bit to yep. see if we can say well is this thing always in that same river exactly. no sometimes it's not so you can start to separate these strands back out. Yes. theoretically over and that was one of the things they said in this episode too like that's effective in that cognitive you know therapy of that sort they they said hypnotism is just a lot faster it's yes. essentially the same process just a lot faster which i thought was interesting but it's this idea that you can get someone into a state where they're more able to accept um these the suggestions right influence the influence yeah mm-hmm. and, and if and the goal again, yeah go ahead sorry if the goal of that influence is to, you know, address to those the specific trauma or whatever, it can be really, uh, you know, according to them and according to how hypnotizable you are, mm-hmm. it can be very effective in terms of just getting right to the root of the issue, teasing it out, working it out, doing it in a safe way. Sure. One of the things they mentioned is that um, when they pr- prep you for it, they give you all the tools to be in control of it. So you can turn it on, you can turn yeah. it off. And then essentially their goal is to make it something reproducible. So whenever you need to like, you know, reframe your brain again, cause you feel like it's starting to go back to that river state, you can enter that state of <laughs> hypnotism self, you right. know, whatever hypnotism to be able to kind of re go through these, um, you know, the process of whatever it is. And mm-hmm. anyway, I thought that was interesting. Uh, essentially, they're saying like it's a, it's a way to kind of uh, quickly, I guess, maybe short circuit the thing, the pro- the normal process. Yeah, sure. Which anytime you hear a shortcut, you know that's that can be a mm-hmm. uh, you should be weary of shortcuts for many reasons. Sure, know? but yeah, your thoughts. You know, that's what that's what, and I and I think you know, 
even the word therapy for years in general, you know, it's like, no. And I think, and I think what makes that difference is my viewpoint. And granted, you know, I was, I, sh- I shifted. I'm not saying, you know, I mean, I remember, you know, seeing people staged in my personal life, you know, on a, you know, from a hypnotic standpoint, you know, I've, I've, I've experienced that, seen that, you know, and it's like, and I, and I do feel, uh, they sh- talked about it in the, uh, the podcast too. You know, I, I think that's, that, that's irresponsible, you know, in some ways to use that. And I think, Go Can ahead. you explain that you, you you saw you experienced what now? In other words, I've 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 seen hypnotists you've hired seen. hired hypnotists come wow. into a oh yeah like yeah. you've been present for the experience. yeah I've been present for the experience I've tell I've, me more Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well it's like I said you know it's like you can take a grown you know. 50 year old respectable individual and turn them into a laughing yeah. stock because every time you know you yeah. say a word they'll cluck like a chicken was that the purpose like what was the event that the the, the- it was like a uh, a conference okay you know as part of yeah uh, like a comedian or training or yeah. It, it was your, like the evening entertainment or, you okay. know, like your, you know, your two o'clock break or whatever, okay. you know, when everybody's fallen asleep, okay, yeah. you know, you bring in, you bring, <laughs> you bring in, in the, the keynote, tricks. you know, the, yeah. yeah, you bring in the, you know, yeah. the, yeah. the entertainment, yeah. if you will. Okay. I believe it was actually, I believe it was actually like evening entertainment, like yeah. the, you know, the gala or whatever, yeah. you know? And so, you know, they take individuals, of course, that, you know, were actually, you know, managers or higher up people and put them on this stage yeah. and, you know, make them look like laughing yeah. stocks, which of course, from a, you know, a group mentality, yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, we're all for this, yeah. you know, <laughs> put it to the man type stuff. <laughs> but I, it wasn't, in, you know, it was in the podcast, you know, that they brought up, you know, sometimes, you know, in this process of staging and entertainment, of course, you know, we're we're putting people in this state but we're not always mindful of yeah. bringing them out yeah. and i thought you know that's I, I, i'll be honest there was a lot of parallels in my perspective with what i do you know okay. and how and how being a being responsible for people's time taking them into a state yeah. because i believe therapy and yeah. hypnosis and other things does come back to the responsibility of the person to put safeguards in place. It yeah. has to be safe. Yes. Cause if it's not safe, nothing's going to yeah. change that kind of thing. Yeah. I, I like what you're saying about time and, and responsible for the essentially the session, because I, I think what you're getting at is this idea that you can, you could work them all up and get them all riled up right to the end of the session. Yep. And that's what they're leaving. So their brain is, you know, their state has been changed to be in this very irritable state and unwilling to, you know, maybe just com- be confront, you yeah. know, whatever, kind of, kind of exactly. leaving in and in, in, in not great state. And yep. so you, you see it as your responsibility to kind of bring them into a, a place and then bring them back to, yep. a, 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 yeah. It makes a lot of sense, which also makes a lot of sense, What you know, as far as what they're saying about um, short circuiting some of that process to be able, OK, let's get right back to, yep. you know, the work and then get right back out of it, you know. Um, and I think that's yeah, interesting. And I think that's where, you know, they mentioned, uh, well, you mentioned it as far as, you know, we all have different schemas, you know, as far as what one word may mean to you is far different than what it may money for example yeah you know what does that mean when i say the word money alone what does that say to you you know versus what it means to me and likely we're going to view that very differently well it they they mentioned the you know the one lady who had been part of a stage dynamic yeah and you know she was supposed to hold a little bird yeah. You know, and she saw herself as a uh, as a trophy wife who was the bird in the gilded cage yeah. and you know and that that state was never recognized and she wasn't transitioned out. And that's irresponsible in my yeah. part, you know, yeah. to be able to yeah. take someone to that state and then, you know, not be able to, you know, reprocess that state in mm-hmm. such a way that says, "Okay, we're coming back because I believe yeah, that's a that's a a lot of what 
therapy is from my perspective is this exposure yes not yes. not i'm not an exposure therapist but we're able to talk about things it has to be a safe environment for me to go into this mental state of feeling safe enough to talk about that traumatic experience mm -hmm. And I think what I, I think what hypnotism does in this clinical sense of hypnotism is it is able to get me into that state quicker. And I think there again, I think we have multiple, well, not multiple, but I think we have more gateways, as I refer to them, than just, you know, the cognitive behavioral thinking pathway. You know, I think there is a mindfulness type dynamic you know, and I also, you know, like EMDR and, and these other and chemically induced, you know, gateways. I'm not, it, it's, yeah. it's funny because, and it, I go clear back, you know, not clear back. I'm not, but just in the research and this is, this is what makes it interesting is I believe this is how complex we are that some things work for some people that yeah. won't work for other people. Yeah. That's all there is to it. Yeah. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm not sure I've mentioned it in here on the podcast, but there's a great book. Uh, Vander Kalk is his last name. Uh, Norwegian sounding kind of guy. But uh, the body keeps the score. Hmm. And he's probably done the most research compared to or at least written so much on uh, the whole trauma experience. And, you know, he goes through this process and, and this is kind of what connects it to hypnosis for me. He goes through the, and at the end of this book, he goes through all of the different dynamics that have been used to treat trauma because there just really isn't one cookie cutter size yeah. thing to be able to deal with trauma. And yes, you know, yoga works for some people. Mindfulness works for talk therapy works for some people, you know, but ultimately I think at the basis of all of it is this ability to recognize that I'm not just a, a, a hand, um, I'm not just a, a body full of triggers. Yes. You follow me? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not re, I don't have to You're react. Not a puppet. Exactly. I don't have to react to everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to learn. And I would say this for even from a scriptural standpoint, there would be, I suppose you could, you could shift it. Like most things, you can shift them into a non scriptural perspective or a non biblical perspective. But, from my perspective, I don't have an issue. I one of the fruits of the spirit, mm -hmm. self control. You follow me in yep. in that dynamic. I'm learning that when I experience that, and that we see that with phobias. Phobias would be a good yeah. example. You know, I see a snake. Well, is it healthy for me to have a reaction to a snake? Yes, probably so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know now, and if I've been bitten by a dog. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to, but is that to say all dogs are mean and nasty, yeah. you know, and they're going to bite me in the face? No. So, you know, that ability that I have, and, and I think that's where, as they were talking about the clinical hypnosis, it's able to take me to that point where I'm shifting my thoughts about that conflict that the dog represents pain right. and, you know, hospitalization for me. Yeah. All dogs represent that mm -hmm. that creates a conflict and then being able to kind of have that exposure that says okay you know is every experience been this way and how would you interact you know is this the way you act, interact with everything that has hurt you mm -hmm. you know that it's like no mm -hmm. uh, you know i've been hurt by other people mm -hmm. or you know i've been hurt by you know sticks but yeah i still you know mm -hmm stones yeah. and you yeah. know yeah and this is idea I, um i really like kind of what they're saying they they chat a little bit at one point about how um you know we try to avoid pain and we try to mm -hmm. avoid any kind of you know stress sure right and they're saying well stress is part of life and and we have to learn how to deal with strife not avoid it because you 
you just can't. You can't avoid stress. So yeah. the more work you do at canceling everybody and, and clean, creating a clean room of stress or whatever, yep. the more stressed you'll be. Like the more, exactly. you know, the, 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 every little thing will be that much more stressful. Yep. Um, and so they they use the term, of, the, or they re- reference a term called stress inoculation, yep. which is done in some studies with some chimps. Uh, this idea of taking them away from their mother for a bit of time, uh, a little bit a day would actually Two make hours them a day. Yep. two hours a day. It would actually make them more uh, resilient to to stressors in the future. Uh, in the future, yeah. Yep. Um, which stress tolerance is basically yeah yeah. But um, I like what they're saying. They're basically saying if you want to heal trauma, there's no way to heal it without going to it. Yeah. Without you know going back to that stressor and reexamining it and and that's kind of the point of what you're saying, kind of the point of what they're saying is like, no matter what, that's what you got to do. Sure. Now, some people can do it through ketamine therapy. Some people, you know, mm-hmm. even you've heard of psilocybin, like mm-hmm. mushrooms, Shrooms. that kind of thing. Like that's a, I've, I read this article about um, vets who come back and are, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. PTSD, depression, mm-hmm. you know, anger episodes, that kind of thing. And there's a clinic, I think in Mexico or something. Obviously, it's kind of shady. This shady gotcha. thing, right? Yep, crossing the border. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it's not legal here. You know, yep. at least in that the way they were doing it, where they would go and they would do the psilocybin therapy, mm-hmm. um, and come back and you know be mm-hmm. able to live a normal life, that kind of thing. Um, there's that. There's mm-hmm. hypnosis again. But the goal of all of these things, if done in a therapeutic, you know. Mm-hmm session is this attempt to take you right back to that trauma and start to peel apart these tributaries again Mm -hmm. right so you're in the room what what was it like uh what you know Mm -hmm. and describing the situation um but if you're in this the whole thing with again what i understand about hypnosis is all right we're gonna do this thing here's here's how you're in control like Mm -hmm. you're gonna look at it you're gonna enter the state and you're gonna look at the screen on your left the screen on your left is gonna be the the trauma situation the screen on your right is gonna be some buttons that you can Mm -hmm. control it you know and so when you're you know when you reach a state where you're not comfortable you just hit this button to stop and then we'll pop Mm -hmm. back out and we'll be in a safe place or whatever um and just the ability to project Mm -hmm. in your mind onto screens just the ability to say it's not a real thing it's mm-hmm. this thing that's replaying in front of me that i can control sure allows you to go back into that memory and kind of rewind fast forward pause yep. you know and work through that and say now when this happened what what was the situation what and they use this one example of this lady who had uh, been assaulted and mm. she kind of came away from it as she zoomed into the situation and kind of relived it going wow it could have been way worse like he could have murdered me Mm. Um, and you know, the, the takeaway was, what did you find about that? You know, I think actually he didn't expect me to fight. Like, I think I was stronger than he thought it was. Mm. And I ended up being able to get out of that situation. And so the result of this therapy was to go back and go, you know, you're not as vulnerable as it made you feel like Mm. you were actually very strong in that situation and managed to escape or whatever it was. Mm. And that allowed her to start reframing some of those insecurities to say, you know, yep. I'm pretty strong and, you know, I don't know. This is kind of an interesting uh, situation that they set up. But I like this idea of creating the safe construct to then go into the thing. Sure. Because from my understanding and from our conversation, just, mm-hmm. you know, there's no other way to deal with trauma but to deal with it. Like to go to it and sure. work through it, tease yep. it apart. Is that? No, it's and it's, it's interesting because I, I think and um. I'm talking at times, you know, as as we're talking, I'm thinking, you know, I use the terminology gateways and so on and so forth. But, you know, I would dare say, you know, sex and sexuality, you know, or basically our God-given design to be able to have sex as another way, another gateway of influence, if you mm-hmm. will. And I think, you know, so often it is when it's used out of context that, you know, it becomes damaging. Yeah. But in God's design for it, it's very, you know, comforting. It's very, you know, it, it builds relationship bonding. bonding. Yes. Yeah. There's a design for it. Yeah. And I think sometimes, you know, yeah. that's, that's what, mm. you know, in that process and think it when you, when we even think of the word, uh, charisma or someone who's charismatic, 
you know, we can think of, you know, Jim Jones or somebody like that who, or Dave Koresh, who, you know, led many people away, you know, and, you know, to a, in, in an occult type dynamic, you know, cause that, I think that would be one thing that most cult leaders would have, mm-hmm. you know, but you can take someone else who like, like Jimmy Evans or somebody who just has a passion for marriage or somebody like that and, and leads multiple people in a, in a, in a godly, you know, biblical direction, doesn't have to maintain that following for a false sense of pride, but yet they have a following, you know, people have a following who's the, who are all, um, Olstein, you know, he has a following, you know, and I think, you know, so we have to be careful from my perspective about saying, oh, that's that. That's mm. that's of the occult, you mm. know, charisma. That's all, you know, people who are charismatic just lead people astray. Huh? Not always, you mm-hmm. know, we all we all know. And well, your your mentor mm. was a very charismatic, you know, as mm-hmm. you described Keith yeah. in that process, yeah. you know, someone who could lead people. Granted, maybe he was he didn't deal with his own pride issues of self, but yet it's not that what he did didn't have an impact for the kingdom either. Yeah. You know, and I think that's where I come from kind of with this, you know, it's, it's the brick or it's the money thing. You know, we can want to shift quickly to, you know, money's the root of all evil. Well, no, the love of money is the root of all evil, Mm -hmm. you know, and a brick can be used to be pitched through a window, but yet it can also build, you know, up schools and educational facilities, you know, that Mm -hmm. kind of thing. It's, and that's how I see so much of what, you know, part of what God has given us in these different gateways to be able to shift that influence in some ways. And and it's and and here again, uh, I'm I'm just thinking of it as, as I was going through that. It's it's not about me in this process, but I would dare say I have my, you know, mindfulness practices. Like um, the the one that came to mind for me is um, there's no no secret. I'll take naps sometimes, you know, in in my office in the process of a day if I have a break or something. And it's like, I've been able to go to sleep, you know, three times in seven minutes before, just because I can go to sleep that quickly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a dream might wake me up or something, but part of my routine is I'll, I'll have a routine. I'll, I'll, I lay down in a certain way. I, you know, and, and then I start counting, you know, and that, that just basically gives me a single minded focus. I'm not saying, well, I got this client. What if my alarm doesn't go off? What if this, what, 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 all I'm doing is counting. And by the time I'm to 10, I'm typically asleep, Mm -hmm. you know, because I'm not in that divided. Very similar to hypnosis, right? In in a lot of cases, yes. (laughs) And like EMDR, you know, uh, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Nice job. (laughs) Yeah, well, like you say, (laughs) I sometimes get restructuring, but it's reprocessing. And basically, you know, that's, that's another gateway if you will and i think you know they mentioned it in there but mm-hmm. i think it, it it's basically my ability to move my eyes back and forth in such a way mm-hmm. and um you know it was it was noticed by a lady who was walking through a park you know as the founder of that that process and you know it's like and we have these abilities sometimes you know when we tend to look up to the left you know it kind of signifies part of our design there's a purpose for that there's like a conscious you know i'm i'm tapping into my self-conscious when i'm looking up Mm. either to the right or to the left i don't have that part down i'll be Mm. honest with you but our eyes do certain things Mm. you know when we're processing you know and it's and it's you know it's so that's another if i if i may say you know i'm using the term loosely a little bit this morning but another gateway that we have to be able to be open to these processes of influence and Mm -hmm. being able to minimize pain that was that that lady recognized that you know as she moved her eyes in a specific way you know and it had and it had uh as i'm recalling a little more it had something to do with the way the light was coming through the trees 
So if you think about it, some people, um, especially um, seizures, people who are given to seizures, a strobing effect can bring on seizures for people. Yeah, You follow me? Yep. And that's what it was for her. It was like a sunset and she passing through trees in this process. And she recognized she was moving her eyes in a certain way. And she suddenly recognized that she, what was once a painful thought or memory was had lost its significance. Hmm. So, you know, it's like, and, and from my perspective, that's not, you know, that's not seancing, that's not trans, you know, transcendental meditation, you know, I mean, it's just, that was an experience and it created an awareness and she looked to develop that in a way that helped other people find that relief yeah. from those painful memories as well. Yeah. And so granted, yeah. And, you know, the brick analogy is great, right? Every tool can be used to hurt or to sure. you know, harm or to, to help. And, yep, you know, tear down, build up. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things I really enjoyed about this particular podcast episode was hearing this Dr. Spiegel kind of talk about how his life's work has been about trying to figure out the best mm. way to help people. And he said, mm. this seems to be the best way. And mm. I really enjoy yeah. seeing this tool be used to help people. And um, yep. so that kind of helped. Uh, reframe the brick a little bit for me, right? To kind of hear that perspective and, yeah. oh, that tool can be used in that way and, and it's been effective in helping to build the house, right? Yeah. Like, um, so, yeah, I think we'll, we're definitely going to, we'll link to these different resources. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, by questions. all means. Yeah, the podcast episode, you know. Um, yeah, and I would encourage any of you, you know, listeners, like read this stuff, you yeah. know, listen to this stuff, make your own, you know, kind of decisions and, yep. and, and thoughts on it. But, um, just a very, it was very interesting to me to think about this and all of this stuff really is anything, any, you mentioned gateway, right? Like yeah. uh, any gateway to me is fascinating. I got right? you. This idea where yeah. you're telling me I can get kind of sh like short circuit this process to get yep. to this, uh, brain change and the thing is i know brain change is possible and i know that there are long pathways to get to that sure and that's celebrate recovery you know like yeah. if you're involved in a program like that for years and years you your brain will change for the better you no know doubt. It, when you're in, or or if you have a good you know quality group of friends and you meet regularly or you have a mastermind. You ever yep. heard that term like a business mastermind where you meet with other people in a similar business set you know sure and, and it's all at this goal to hold each other accountable, to learn and grow from each other. Yep. Anything like that is this attempt to, um, re you know, reframe your brain pathways sure. to be more effective. You know, we can even look at that as the early church model coming, yeah. to, coming together, yeah. small groups coming together, you know, with a positive word, you know, yep. a word of encouragement, a, a word from the, you know, or a, a song, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. It's church in general, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the hope, you know, yep. and, and as, as a, I was thinking about, you know, as you were mentioning CR, you know, from my perspective, CR is a more complex hmm. dynamic. You follow me because you have the 12 steps, you know, you have this it's gathering type yeah, of, yeah. that offer people tools to be able to implement in such a way on a, on a complex dynamic, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's hurts, habits, or hangups. Mm -hmm. But I, th I think about it so often, and I, um, I tend to think about things somewhat in a fundamental way. And, um, the breathing was another one that yeah. came to mind, you know, because yep. breathing for, exercise. Yeah, yeah. For me, that's a fundamental, mm -hmm. you know, to where, when I expect, because that's a God given, you know, auto automatic nervous system type thing to be able to say once that I'm, I'm, I'm floating down that river again and I'm feeling all these things from a somatic, you know, my body is feeling these things at a certain level. And it's like, I can still engage my prefrontal cortex in such a way that says, okay, I'm feeling this, but it doesn't have to be the same. Yeah. As it was. And I can, and I can start, you know, that diaphragmatic breathing that, that takes back the control of my body, you know, from my, um, prefrontal cortex, uh, huh. your primary, primary function, you know, I'm taking, I'm taking, um, 
I'm bypassing my flight or fight mechanisms yeah. in such a way that I'm re-engaging mm-hmm. my body. I'm able to take that because like you say, my uh, primary function is strong because yeah. it's designed to keep me alive, but it's not real smart. Right. So fireworks and gunfire are very similar. Yeah. So I have to engage my prefrontal cortex to be able to decipher that difference. To tease them out, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so when I'm able to breathe, I'm able mm. to keep that function online mm. that says, okay, you know, this is 4th of July. This isn't Afghanistan again. Yeah. You follow me? Yep. And I think that's, and that's, mm. and I think that's part of that hypnosis when I can go to that state. And, um, and I think it, like you're saying, it bypasses in such a way that I can get that influence quicker. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I can still maintain a certain level of self-control, mm-hmm. you know, not that we're all in control, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Con- Cause con- control can have a negative context, yeah. just like any other word. If yeah. it, if it goes too far, if I have to think that I'm God and I yeah. maintain ultimate right. control, when then rip, I'm going when too I far. I rip the reins away and say, these are mine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, that's, yeah, it's really all good stuff. That, it makes me think of something that's been really front of mind. And actually that's a, that's a pun of her about what I'm about to say, <laughs> but like, uh, I've been talking about this recently a lot, specifically um, in the regards to some conversations with some friends I have, um, you know, I, I work with sexual addiction a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And that's something in my background. So I like I, I I work with others to try and work through that. And there's this one concept that we that we call bouncing eyes. Okay. <laughs> and it's this idea that um, you know instead of keep fixating on a woman as she walks through the door, mm-hmm. maybe she's you know scantily clad or whatever. Instead of fixating mm-hmm. on that, like bounce. You know, sure. Oh, I notice. I move on. Right. Yep. Uh, but the big kind of the premise behind that from my perspective is bringing something from the subconscious up into the consciousness. So it's kind of taking it from the primary function of ooh, sex need it, you know, into this front, this uh, frontal cortex area where I go, yeah, but that's, that's, that's a woman. I respect her. I don't, you know, that's not, she's not mine to have. Yep. She's not a possession. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. She's not even an object. She's a human being. She has, she has parents. She might have kids, you know, like just, bringing it up into the, the consciousness instead of leaving it. And I feel like so much of addiction and, and problematic behavior is because it's left in the subconscious. So a lot sure. of the work of recovery is like, let's let's bump it up into the consciousness. Yep. So let's be focused on this thing instead of not thinking about this thing. And that's why there's so much uh, repetitive behavior and recovery and sure. you know consistent environments, consistent people, places, things that you do is it's is to keep this thing up in the yep. in the frontal cortex instead of letting it fall back to primary functions of like that thing solves my needs i need more yep. you know um and i i don't know just, for some reason that's come up in conversations like several times in that past couple of weeks that so made me think of that but yeah. this idea of like separating it you know bring it up out of the self subconscious to be sure. able to actually operate on it Yep. To be able to think about it, roll it around in your hand, like I'm I'm holding my hands in front of me, right? This is the idea in front of me. I can look at it, I can turn it, I can move it, I can do what I need to do with it. Yep. Instead of just letting it control me subconsciously. Um and yeah. I feel like that's a lot of what these gateways allow you to do. Mm-hmm. Is like take this thing from that primary side of just Flight or flight, yeah, subconscious, sure. and bring it up into the consciousness where you can ro- hold it in your hand, roll it around, look at it yep. um, in, in some ways in a short-circuited fashion where, you know, holding that thing in your hand might, you, you might be like, I can't do that. It's going to burn my hands or whatever. It's sure. just like this like fear. You can kind of jump into that in a, in a expedited form, whether it's through chemical or hypnosis or whatever, to where you now you're mm-hmm. able to operate with it safely. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because I'll, I'll what you're talking about in the subconscious, you know, I'll typically identify those as files. Mm. In other words, we have a multitude of files in our subconscious that we typically, when someone asks us a question or we're posed with a conflict, will we typically? Well, it's about eight seconds. The average is about eight seconds. Most decisions we have about seven to ten seconds 
to be able to formulize a decision. And so often our tendency is to not even bring it so much to the to the conscious. Right. We leave it in the, we we just make that decision based on those prior files of family, sex, you know, whatever, you know, we need mm-hmm. to combine, I pull it out of those files to be able to make that decision. Yeah. And it's just funny cuz you know, when you think about 8 seconds, 8 seconds can be a long time if you're riding a bull. Yeah. You know, but it can be an instant if yeah. you're trying to, you know, if you're just following a habit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I like that what and you're eight saying. Eight seconds that, is the the upper limit, right? So probably most things we pull from the cash and we move on. And oh yeah, that's what I'm instant, saying. But right? we have, we still have seven to ten seconds, give or take, you know, eight seconds to make a different decision in that process Mm. when we have that to in order to bring it from the subconscious to the conscious we still have like like on tv we have that eight second delay or whatever to be able to say no i'm not going to do that and that's just a conscious decision and being able to make that Mm. in such a way that gives me a level of self-control can make all the difference so if i reframe what you're saying or, or mm-hmm. try and yeah. understand a little bit more essentially if i struggle with a compulsive behavior mm-hmm. uh maybe one one particular tool to use is say whenever you have a compulsion to do that thing mm-hmm. think about it for eight seconds yep or ten yep. go for ten just think before about i do that seconds and if you still gotta have that mm-hmm. cookie well you know yeah. whatever but if you can do, every single time you have a compulsion you give it that 10 second yep focused thought right do i need it can yes. i wait can i wait you know 20 minutes you know you go yeah. through the 10 seconds is a long time to think about all the things and at the end if you're like no i gotta have it well help yourself you but if you can get you know if if in the course of that you're I feel like it's a good tool. Is that kind of? Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. And then I think too, you know, in this process, not getting frustrated with ourselves. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, well, I shouldn't have done that. I, you know, that da, 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 I'm, I'm terrible. I should, yeah. you know, that thought came to my mind mm-hmm. here again. I'm. Yeah. We need uh, to do an episode on shame. Yeah. Versus, have we done? I, I think we have. <laughs> it seems like we have. Sometimes it's 85, seems. <laughs> 85th episode this yeah. week. So at this point, you got to, you got to understand it's, it's hard to remember them all. But at, anyway, the, at the same to, time, I'm, I'm thinking about it in that context of, you know, how things come to my mind and I have the ability to process it. I have to have the ability to take my thoughts captive, self-control, those kind of things when I'm able to engage that. And that's where, um, <clears throat> In some ways, I don't have an issue, you know, with a physical exercise of like yoga. Yeah. Because I think it, it it's another form of being able to exercise a level of self-control that what I wasn't able to do, I didn't have this flexibility before, you know, now I've basically worked on it and now I have this ability and that's just a from my perspective, a healthy form of self-control. Yeah. And when I can exercise that, then I'm able to apply that to other areas of my life as well. Yeah. It's it's like learning how to, yeah, it's like a safe way to learn how to reprogram, right? Yeah, yeah. because I'm, I'm being able to recognize that even though in that, circumstance like when you mentioned the woman you know who was you know experienced sexual abuse that kind of thing you know she, it's a matter of that relearning you know that yeah. i may not have had control in that situation full control i didn't may not have had a hundred percent yeah but i had certain controls yeah and i'm able to see that better yeah and i'm able to recognize that in life i still have certain controls and i'm working to you know increase those controls yeah that that are available to me yeah and we just <clears throat> recently had an episode on the serenity prayer right yeah yeah um and that's a you know while you're talking about control the mm-hmm. other half of this equation is where we don't and learning the difference and yes. i feel like that's where we get stuck because it is important to know when you don't have control. Yep. Right. And it's, and it's, and there's something to be said for accepting that as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we don't have to re-tease the serenity prayer, but I do, I do think that's a, 
as much as we talk about needing to learn control over those behaviors, mm-hmm. it's also important to understand what you don't have control over. You don't have control over someone else's behavior, for yep. instance. And so, you know, that's where codependence needs some reprogramming to be able to say, no, I can't, you know, I can't make mm-hmm. that person do what I want to make them do. Right. No matter what my behavior is, even if I get them to do what I'm trying to make them do, it's going to be based on my efforts, not their own, yep. you know? And so like, yeah, understanding the difference between what I have control over and what I don't is is a pretty important skill to have. Um, but and yeah, I, and I, as I was thinking about what you were saying too, I think you know that that scripture about um, you know all everything's permissible. You're playing my guitar. I'm playing your guitar chair. by turning your chair. Now, now it's like, where did that tone come from? <laughs> I don't now know. I know. If you'll hear that, but if you do, you'll understand. <laughs> yeah. But uh, in that process of, you know, everything except, um, how, how's that go? Yeah, I, I, everything the, the, is permissible, but not everything is Everything is, is beneficial. beneficial yeah. yeah. And I and I think about that. I, I would extend that to all of our listeners who may disagree on the topic of hip, hypnosis. Mm-hmm. If it's not something, you know, I'm not saying everybody needs to do it by mm-hmm. any means. But, you know, if it's something that you feel is wrong you know, that's okay. Yeah. And for you, it is wrong at that point. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, I think that's, that's part of how I see it and being able to recognize, okay, as I learn though, that there are differences between, you know, what I've experienced or what I think, I think, you know, there's something to be said for that awareness that says, okay, yeah, I'm, um, this, this has less conflict in my mind. Not that I'm accepting all things, but I'm willing to filter in such a way that says, okay, God, I can talk with you about this subject. And, you know, anything that I can talk with God about is healthy from my perspective, you know, right. That awareness. There's no subject off limits with him. Yeah. Yeah. Which is very, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah. if there is something that I can't talk with God about, it's right. probably not beneficial. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, you, James 4, 17 says, remember to sin to know what you ought to do and then not to do it. And sure. vice versa, to, to know you shouldn't do something and then to do it. So I think that applies here in the sense like, yeah, yeah, we're not encouraging anyone to do something that they don't believe is right. But it's, it's definitely an opportunity to kind of think about these things from a... Um, maybe a more healthy perspective instead of the traditional stage Mm -hmm. version Mm -hmm. um, to be able to think about it from a, yeah, potentially offering help to people who need help. Yeah. Nope. That's uh, that's uh, I guess what we desire to do is offer the ability to offer help in such a way that says, Hey, this is, this is something we're aware of and we might as well talk about it because it can seem to be polarizing at times. Yep. Yeah. Cause that's how we see it. That's how we see it. Hey, thank you for listening to our podcast. If you like How I See It, please do all the things that podcasts tell you to do. Subscribe, rate, review, follow us, uh, and or talk nicely about us on social media. If you want to reach out, the email is us at howiseeit.click. Yep, I said dot click, as in dot C-L-I-C-K. Please tell your friends about this show, and we'll see you on the next one.